Okay, I want to turn to your new novel. It is called The Global War on Morris. It's a satirical book on the war on terror. Uh, I read it and I was, I have to say, I was laughing out loud. It's about a poor, boring schlub named Morris from Long Island <laughs> who was accused falsely and imprisoned. Where did this idea come from? Well, you know, sometimes the truth is uh, stranger than fiction. And I would sit in these classified briefings with President Bush and Vice President Cheney and hear things that I knew would, were completely unbelievable, implausible, uh, and, uh, you know, would make an interesting book maybe for a few people, uh, which is why I decided to put it in, in satirical form. Uh, and finally, I was sitting in an Armed Services Committee hearing one day, listening to a general apologize for the fact that the government accidentally spied on a group of peaceful Quakers uh, who were planning uh, a protest at a military base, uh, not an act of terror. Uh, and I decided right then and there, this is the book. We're going to take this innocent mm -hmm. guy whose whole philosophy of life is don't make waves mm -hmm. and have him become public enemy number one because of a misguided NSA surveillance program. You know, you use a lot of real names from the Bush White House, the, President Bush, uh, Dick Cheney, Karl Rove, to name a few. Uh, I want to show uh, our viewers what you have in your dedication to former Vice President Dick Cheney and to my dad, who didn't particularly care for him. Explain that. Well, uh, the Vice President does make a recurrent appearance uh, in this book. And look, it's a parody. It's satire, good biting satire, exaggerates certain qualities uh, and flaws. And that's clearly what this book does, not only uh, about the Vice President, but about many others, including uh, s some in Congress and, uh, and, and many of my colleagues. My dad was a, a very, uh, he was a hardcore Democrat in Phoenix, Arizona. I lost him two years ago. And when I would do shows like CNN uh, and other networks, uh, he was my toughest critic. He would call immediately after those interviews and say, you know, you weren't progressive enough. You weren't liberal enough, which is why I dedicated this book to him. Uh, you also uh, sort of take on your own party in the book. Here's what you wrote about a senator who's not named from New York, uh, but clearly de depicting your own senior senator, Chuck Schumer. Karen even managed to get an interview with a senator from New York, a man physiologically incapable of declining any request that involved a camera. He had a ravenous appetite for publicity, and even when he consumed massive amounts, he felt malnourished. Publicity made his heart beat. Ouch! Have you talked to Chuck Schumer about this? Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> I have a very high uh, respect and admiration for, uh, for Senator Schumer. Look, you could take that sentence and apply it to every single member of the United States uh -huh. Congress and every <laughs> single member of the Senate. But uh, some identities were changed to protect the innocent. Um, in this case, I'll let the readers judge. Uh, you know, I have to say, I, I don't want to give too much away, but the, the one, there's one part where there's kind of a, a, a yenta from New York, a Jewish yenta, who finds herself uh, in a therapy session with a sleeper cell in Florida, which is just almost too much to, to, to comprehend. How did you find time to do this? Look, you're a representative of, of New York. You were in charge of trying to get the Democrats uh, elected to the House, which uh, I think you would admit didn't go so well in, in November. How did you squeeze in writing a novel in, through all that? It, number one, it was therapeutic. Uh, I would go to these meetings uh, in the White House with the uh, president, vice president, come out and, and start writing. Uh, number two, uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote the entire thing on, uh, on my iPhone and, and BlackBerry uh, in cars, on planes, uh, and uh, occasionally in very boring meetings. Uh, and since there were a lot of occasional, a, a lot of very boring meetings, uh, I was able to write many words. Boring meetings in Washington? That's really shocking. Hard to believe. <laughs> Congressman, That's right. Congressman Steve Israel, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we'll be right Happy back. Happy New Year. You too.